in the show Designated Survivor, it shows a lot of this guy's um, leadership mm -hmm. and authority as a president. So this guy was placed into a different room um, due to them having a mo uh, not a movie, a meeting with the president and vice president and different people within um, the government. So he was placed into a different mo movie meeting room just in case something really happened. In this case, a bomb happened, a bomb attack happened, and uh, he became president due to the loss of so many people. And um, he had a face. Uh, fighting off other people and wars, trying to find the attackist, and still trying to work to um, defend his country and make deals with other countries to benefit his country. And he faced a lot of hate for it. He was down um, within the president's line. It was not new, uh, known very well. People judged him saying that he wasn't going to do really good, but he ended up leading the country really well. Um, even his own co-workers, um, used to say that he was not going to be a good president and they uh, believed in him at towards the end and he did really good. And once again, this relates to our topic of defining authority and leadership of Unit 4, Target 3. This year, we talked about race and very little about genders, but I can t relate this to movie Hidden Figures. This relates because the three girls are judged throughout the movie because they are African American and women but they are still strong and able to do things that the white men can do. This is from Unit 1, Topic Race-Based Slavery, Target 4. The Enlightenment is when people in Europe began to think, to think for themselves. And we can relate this to Despicable Me because one grew always thinks for himself. He doesn't think about anybody else but himself. And two, Enlightenment is an idea. The Europeans, the Europeans had an idea, and that was their enlightenment. And Gru always says he has a light or a light bulb, and that means usually you have an idea because um, light bulb um, equals an idea. This is topic something. See a group of teens help girls and boys fight back on the casual sexism in their school. This relates to the Civil War because the activists at that school who fought against the sexism fought with the, they fought against the people who were participating in the sexism and harassment at their school. The people who are against the sexism are the North because the South broke away from the North, the activists. And the South wanted to do their own thing. Like in Moxie, they wanted to do their own thing, like judge and harass people. They wanted to do their own thing and be themselves, but when people who were against sexism, sexism or the North wanted to stop them and treat everybody like people, the North didn't agree with the ways of the South aka slavery, and eventually the South and North went into war. To make this a little more clear, the North are the people who cared about others who were harassed and tried to stop the, harass the harassment in their school. The, the South are the people who harassed and sexualized the kids at the school. The South were the people who didn't care and participated in sexism and harassment fought against the North, the people who fought for rights and to be themselves to, and to stop the harassment. Eventually, the activists won because, like the South, they surrendered. This is, this is Divergent, and in Divergent, there's five factions. Each faction is like a nation. So, the two factions, um, Donnelly and Erudite, they form an alliance together, and they want to take over the, the rest of the other three factions Agnation, Amity, Candor, and each faction represents something. Candor represents honesty, Amity, Crofts and stuff, Erudite, they're, they're the smart ones, Agnation, Selfishness, and Dauntless. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dauntless. <laughs> Sorry. Um, they're like the faction of the brave. And I can relate this to the Civil War because each 
the North and South were two different nations because at this point, the South was already broken off of the North. And it's a civil war because it's two nations fighting. So I can relate this to Divergent because the North also stands for some, they have, they have things that they have, oh my God, that the South doesn't have, I'm so sorry. And the South has things that the North doesn't have, but the South had surrendered to the North because the North was like a lot more powerful. They had more people, they had machineries, they had actually a lot more farmland than the South did. And I can still relate this to um, Divergent because in each faction had their own things. South didn't have much um, land or people, machinery, and a lot of the industrial things. But North also didn't have, um, like, the, oh, sorry, what's the word? Alliances, like the South did. The South had alliances and were, I guess, you could say friends with other nations like France and England. And again, I can relate this to um, Divergent because Donalus and Erudite formed an alliance. They're two different nations, two different factions that came together and tried to take over the rest. Alexander Hamilton was responsible for fixing the economy because he was the Secretary of Treasury. To gain revenue, Hamilton created a protective tariff, or tax, created on foreign goods. This is from Unit 6, Topic Alexander Hamilton. Learn on Target 1A. Amazing Grace is a 2006 Britain American biographical drama film. The slave trade relates to this movie because the movie is about the campaign against the Brit slave trade in the British Empire, led by William W., who was responsible to leading the anti-slavery trade. This is from Unit 1, Topic Race-Based Slavery, Target 4.